All right, this is more about weather and weather maps. I'm on page 465 in your textbook. So I'd actually like you to take Unit 8 Lesson 4, find page 465, and add this as kind of part of the things that you do for the lesson. All right, so it says weather maps are one type of output from a weather forecasting system. On a weather map, you can find information about atmospheric pressure, and about the direction and temperature of moving air. The numbered lines on a weather map are called isobars. Isobars connect areas that have the same atmospheric pressure. Isobars center around areas of high and low pressure. An area of high pressure with the H indicates a place where cool, dense air is falling. An area of low pressure, L, indicates a place where warm, less dense air is rising. And pressure differences cause air to move. Okay, so let's stop and do some highlighting. So the numbered lines on a weather map are called isobars. In this case, at least they're isobars. Um, isobars connect areas that have the same atmospheric pressure. Isobars center around areas of high pressure and low pressure. An area of high pressure indicates a place where cool, dense air is falling. An area of low pressure indicates a place where warm, less dense air is rising. Pressure differences cause air to move. Remember that air moves from high pressure to low pressure. And if air is moving, that is wind. Okay, the leading edge of a cool air mass is called a cold front. So if it's the cold air that's doing the moving, we call it a cold front. Leading edge of a cool air mass is called a cold front. Leading edge or the moving edge of a warm air mass is called a warm front. On a weather map, blue lines with triangles show cold fronts and red lines with half circles show warm fronts. Okay? Okay. Reminder, the direction of the triangles or half circles on a map shows which way a front is moving. Also, wind direction is described in terms of the direction from which it is blowing. So if we're talking about a north wind, it is blowing from the north. A west wind is blowing from the west to the east. Okay, so let's look at our weather map down here. Notice that we have all of these black lines. Those black lines have numbers on them. Those numbers are way too big to be talking about temperatures. Those numbers are um, pressure readings in millibars. Okay. So these black lines are isobars. You have a, a high pressure center here, a low pressure center here. This blue line with the blue spikes is a cold front. This red line with the red humps is a warm front. All right. How would you describe the wind direction behind the warm and cold fronts shown on the map? All right, well, Behind the cold front, you're going to have wind from the north or northwest. Okay. Okay, so behind the cold front, winds from the north or the northwest, indicated by these arrows up here. Behind the warm front, which is going this way, winds are from the south. Okay, so warm front moving up from south to north. That's the direction that the wind is going to take too, from south to north. So winds are from the south. Over here, the cold front, winds are from either the north or the northwest. They're coming from the northwest going towards the southeast. Okay, let's look down here. This is our handy dandy little weather station. And I just want 
to point out that there are several instruments on a weather station that you might recognize. An anemometer measures wind speed. It has the little cups that spin around. Uh, there's a wind vane that will turn to indicate the wind direction. There's usually a digital barometer, a rain gauge, a thermometer, and a hygrometer, which is an instrument that measures the moisture content in the air or relative humidity. Okay. All right, join me on the next couple of pages, please. Okay, I'm now on page 466, and I'm looking at a list of cities and some information about them. I have barometric pressure, I have wind direction, and I have temperature. Which information in the table will you use to determine where the high and low pressure areas may be located? Well, I would just look through the list. I notice that New York seems to have the lowest barometric pressure, so I would expect that somewhere near the city of New York that there is a low pressure center. Also, I go through the list. Denver, that's a pretty high number. I think that's the highest. Okay, so I'm not going to be surprised if I see an H near the city of Denver. So let's see what we've got on page 467. All right. So here's page 467, and it says use data from the table and the map to answer the questions below. So here's Denver, here's New York, right there. We've got a cold front here, we've got a warm front there. All right, uh, you can't really see the questions, I'd rather you look at the map. Um, according to the data in the table, where are the centers of the high and low pressure systems at this time? Well. I think when we looked at the table, we made a pretty good guess. We've got a high pressure center over here near Denver, so I'm going to mark it with a blue H. And over here by New York City, we've got a low pressure center, so I'm going to mark it with a red L. Add the temperature listed in the table for each city on the map. Okay, well, let's see. Let me stop. What I'm going to do is you're going to go back to page 466, add the temperatures uh, onto this map. So I'm going to do that, and then you guys rejoin me after you've had a chance to do yours. Okay, I think I got all the cities. It looks like I maybe did. All right, so I wrote the temperatures for those cities beside each little point for the city. And remember, I got those numbers from page 466. So I did A, I marked the highs and lows. I did B. Now let's look at C. It says, imagine that you're a meteorologist in Atlanta. So Atlanta's right here. And this is the current map. What temperature change would you predict over the next few hours and why? Well, if I live in Atlanta, I predict that my temperature is going to drop because there is a cold front over here. And I can tell by the spikes that it is headed toward Atlanta. So right now, Atlanta's fairly warm. But when the cold front comes through, the temperature is going to drop. So what temperature change would you predict for Atlanta? Temperature is going to decrease. Why? Do to a cold front it's going to pass through the area okay what pressure change would you predict for Denver over the next few days and why we're not going to do that one okay but I definitely want you to understand why Atlanta's temperature is going to drop okay 